Hi, my name is Lynn Suzek. This is a promo about chapter 7 in my book, First Wash the Inside. It's called Sin is Not an Action. This is news. This is a revelation that I believe God gave me upon much reflection of myself. And um, God loves it when we start to ask questions uh, about ourselves. If you don't ask, he can't really answer and often we don't want to know. When I started examining myself, trying to understand what I had become and how to change, God was very excited about that as he will be for you. Um, the revelation that he gave me was that sin is not in your actions. Often we try to improve ourselves by changing our actions. And if you are involved in addictions of some sort, this is a problem because you're looking at the wrong part of yourself. Your actions are controlled by your heart. And sin is conceived in the heart. Jesus became sin for us. How could he become sin if sin is an action? He did not do anything wrong. He became sin on the cross. I have many other scriptures to support my point, but I want to give you a few points. Jesus said that if we hate someone, we are a murderer already. Even if you never act on that thought, you are a murderer when you begin to imagine and desire and conceive the, the sin of murder. The, the hatred for someone. This is sin in your heart. There are things that we do to conceive sin and I explain that in my chapter 7 and there are things that we can do to undo and repent from those sins from a heart level. For instance, if you have an eating problem, overeating, you may have a sin of gluttony hidden in your heart and it demonstrates itself, it announces itself in many ways, in the things that come out of your mouth, the things that you say, how often you talk about food, what you look forward to when you go to parties. If food is something that you think about a lot, instead of feeling condemned, look at how to get rid of this problem. Once you discover it, it's easy for you to get rid of it once you understand the tools and how, how God wants you to do that. We use his word, confessions out of our mouth, and there are steps that you can take, tools that I was able to give through this chapter and others. The only thing that you need to do is discover your sins, the things that are controlling your life and damaging yourself and others, and I give you steps on how to do that as well. We are forgiven from all of our sins, past, present, and future. However, the time it takes for us to undo those things is an ongoing process, but God can get started with us when we become born again. A few things that I do to prove that sin is not an action is I start with the things that we do to change our actions but not change our heart. As I said, if you have a sin of gluttony and you're overeating and you don't know how to stop, you may find a way to change your action, but if you haven't repented from that sin and taken steps to deliver yourself from that, that actual sin, then it's going to transfer into other areas of your life. Gluttony can affect us in many ways, whether it's food, it could be a shopping problem, it could be a hoarding problem. There are many ways that we demonstrate that we manifest this sin in our lives. Reflecting upon why you're doing what you're doing is the first step in finding out what you're really repenting of. If you think you're just repenting of inhaling smoke from a cigarette, that is probably not true. 
looking at why you're doing it is much deeper than that. And if you just stop smoking and start doing something else to take its place, you are allowing that sin to continue. You're not repenting from it. You may be changing your habit of smoking and picking up a different habit. That is not true repentance. What is your goal? Is your goal to repent from sin or is it just to stop this bothersome habit and exchange it for another one? There are many other sins that I can talk about that are good examples that sin is not an action. Not all sin is pleasant. Um, the things that you enjoy are because you've conceived that sin in your heart. If you've conceived it, you've come into agreement with it, it comes to live in you, you've become uh, in agreement with a sin entity, I call it, um, then it shares its desire with you and you feel that. Therefore, what you enjoy is not necessarily something that I enjoy and vice versa. You can become a homosexual, for instance, by being insecure and deciding to lie and say um, that you are to fit in and voila, you can conceive that sin and there are many other ways, just for whatever reason, people start doing that. and. I know that they say you're born with it but that's not what the Bible says so um, regardless of how it got there you can get rid of it and its desire um, other every sin has a desire that's conceived and you can extract that from your heart along with this desire and be freed from it from the heart level and that desire will leave until you hate that sin like you should. Um, I prove that by saying there are sins that, for instance, I would be in disagreement with participating in. There are sins that I find disgusting, you find disgusting. I could name some. I mean, um, many of us are not perverts um, within the realm of children. Um, as some are out there in the criminal world. However they become that is another matter, but many of us could agree that that is a disgusting sin and we don't even understand how somebody could ever hurt a child or, or find pleasure in some of the things that people do. So those sins are not something that maybe the average person comes into agreement with they exist and they can be reversed and that's why this book is excellent for church ministry for pastors for prison ministry and for everyday people um, being addicted to things that are ruining their lives drugs pornography homosexuality drunkenness gambling these are things that are ruining our lives and the lives of others around us. If you really want to be delivered of that, my book can help you. Let's first wash the inside, starting with chapter 7 there. Order your book today and help yourself and other people. My name is Lynn Suzak and I'm signing off.